my fellow lonely trollops. I come to you today with my final video on Mr. Scarborough's family. Uh, I'll be talking about chapters 41 to 64 in this in this edition. I am very much out of whack with uh, Steve Donahue, who is holding a uh, read along of all the of, not all of a selection of the lonely trollops. Uh, the uh, no standalone novels of Anthony Trollope uh, in the year 2020. So yes, let's talk about Mr. Scarborough's family. Um, this is the very kind of, this is late, late Trollope, uh, 1883, uh, published as a book at least posthumously, um, con considered the last um, kind of last solid good, uh, you know, Great, uh, great trollop. Uh, I really, I've really enjoyed myself uh, in this one, as I always do. I uh, trollop always takes me a little bit to convince me of stuff at the beginning of his books. Um, in in this case, it was. Uh, I think I I was like, oh, you know, the kind of the 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 Scarboroughs themselves. Scarborough Senior is this kind of is this um, is a is a bastard. Is is somebody who's flouting the law has decided to declare one of his to state one of his sons is illegitimate that he had him had 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 this son before wedlock so therefore he's not the first born born uh thus to cheat uh the cre his creditors uh out of um all the money he owes them uh because he's a um because Mount Joy Scarborough is an inveterate gambler and he is uh so all the money is going to go to the second son Augustus who is a sociopath is a cold as ice um you know, somebody who will do anything, maybe a sociopath, maybe is actually a better way to put it. Someone who will do anything to get what he wants. Uh, and you really get that kind of chill in the er early chapters of this. And, and indeed at the beginning of this book, you're thinking like, Oh, I'm going to spend the novel with these people, but no, uh, Anthony Trollope, isn't that really that kind of fellow? He's not really as interested in these characters. Um, he instead uh, then diverts to more of the kind of the love triangle because Mount Joy uh, has is has been promised to and assumes that he is going to uh, marry his cousin Florence Mount Joy, but she she uh, has has decided that she wants to marry uh, Harry Ansley, who's got like you know a little bit of a um, inheritance coming to him from an uncle, uh, you know it's enough that they, they could they could set up. Uh, but Augustus has decided, well, now that he's got his Mount Joy's uh, money, he also wants his bride. So um, basically fills the uncle, uh, un uncle Pr Prosper with all the all the kind of the lies and half truths, some some truths uh, to basically get him disinherited. Uh, and we spend a lot of time with them and with Florence Mount Joy and Florence's attracts all these suitors. But no, she's holding out for Harry Ansley, who to be honest, doesn't seem like amazing, isn't an amazing guy, definitely is kind of full of himself in, 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 in a lot of ways as kind of a young, young men often are. Um, but this is who she's holding out for. So, um, in these, in these final chat, in this final kind of third of the book, this, this chapter is 41 to 64. Um, uh, it's, I'm always struck by exactly what kind of an author, um, Trollope is because I think I've noted earlier in this book that this is sort of like there's sort of a Dostoevsky kind of um, thing. I think of the Brothers Karamazov that I read um, a year year or two ago, where you know you have a rotten father who's basically has done all this, messed up his sons in various different ways, and and the the kind of the violent dramatic stuff that en ends up happening, and and the good and evil and stuff like that. And that's not Trollope. That is not Trollope. Trollope kind of pushes away these the, the core these core people um for the midpoint of the book and focuses on kind of more kind of just sort of regular folk and he has kind of a comedic uh subplot with Mr. Prosper and like him, him potentially marrying a woman but the woman being far too much kind of her own thing and it's scaring him and is very very kind of hilarious hilarity ensues and kind of a light comic late comic way which you know obviously you're not gonna get in your Dostoevsky um but you get you get to the end and it's like he's he's like he he, he starts to make you try and make you feel sort of a bit of sympathy towards Mountjoy who seems especially at the beginning of the book is very much a brute and he is a gambling addict and he's a wastrel and he's basically you know he assumes he's going to get stuff and that's that doesn't that doesn't happen and he kind of you know 
sloughs off. Now, Augustus Mountjoy, you expect, like, well, there's the drama. He's going to do some horrible, dirty deed. But no, in the end, it's like it gets settled. And, you know, Augustus, he gets, you know, um, um, Trollop kind of gently pushes Augustus off this off to the side. That's not really where his interest is. He doesn't want some, some you know, some dastardly deeds at the end to mess things up. No, it's, it's Trollope is going to gently kind of put things, put things in order and stuff like that. Mr. Scarborough himself, Mr. Scarborough Sr., um, is, is, conti is, continues to be a retrobate. Um, and I mean, I don't think, uh, Trollope pulls his punches. At first, when I, I listened, I listened to, uh, the doctor, his, the resident doctor of the house kind of give his, what's basically the eulogy for, for, uh, uh, Mr. Scarborough Sr., who, of course, double deals when Augustus says, well, we'll hurry up and die. He says, like, well, then I guess I've changed my mind. And he conjures up un yet another marriage that he has indeed had uh, that restores Mountjoy back to his, back to being the, the eldest brother and inheriting the thing. And he's, of course, he's, he has, cre he is, he has cheated the, the, uh, the creditors out of their money. And, um, they are depicted as kind of, they are depicted as greedy Jews. This is the anti-Semitism of, of, of this time of these characters, potentially of the author. But at the end, when he dies, there's a bit of a eulogy towards, to him, which at first I thought was too easy on him. But as I reread it, I think, oh no, there's, there's Trollope. Trollope is, he, he appears like you're kind of, your, your gentle, friendly uncle, but he's got, there's a sharpness there, a sharp, keen eye that is not going to let you off. And um, this is what, this is what um, says Merton, which is the family doctor says, Merton wrote the next morning to his friend, Harry Ansley, respecting the scene. The poor old boy has gone at last. And in spite of all his faults, I feel as though I had lost an old friend. To me, he has been most kind, and I did not know of all his sins, and if I did not know of all his sins, I should say that he had been always loyal and always charitable. Mr. Gray condemns him, and all the world must condemn him. One cannot make an apology for him without being ready to throw out all truth and all morality to the dogs. But if you can imagine for yourself a state of things in which neither truth nor morality shall be thought essential... Then, Mr. Then, old Mr. Scarborough would, would be your hero. He was the bravest man I ever knew. He was always ready to look at all opposition in the face and prepared to bear it down. And whatever he did, he did with the view of accomplishing what he thought to be right for other people. Between him and his God, I cannot judge, but he believed in an almighty one and certainly went forth to meet him without fear in his heart, which is... He'd be your hero if you're willing to set aside all tr all truth and mor morality. So, <coughs> oh, excuse me, ah, Darjeeling. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, the the it, it, at first I thought he was being too easy on Scarborough, but it's like no, no, and in the end he's he sees Scar he sees Scarborough. Scarborough though is indeed seems to be going off to meet his maker with a clear conscience where you have his lawyer, uh, Mr. Gray, is really broken by the um, what's happened. He's been used by Mr. Scarborough to, to, to perpetrate all this, uh, all this, all this, this swindle. Uh, and it, and he, he gives up, he gives up being a lawyer because of it. Um, he actually does set himself to try and do good works for other people. Uh, starts off with his nieces, but uh, especially Melia, who he saved from uh, Miss, Mr. Juniper, who ended up in jail, apparently. Um, but they are sort of too too rotten to the core to actually save. I mean, Amelia has scooped up some poor preacher guy who probably does not know what's hit him and is going to find that Amelia is going to be an extremely expensive wife in in, in many in many respects, uh, he's, she's, she's like, oh, well, he's got kids, but I'm not taking care of the kids. It's just like, uh, this sounds like, uh, just the kind of person you want as your, uh, life partner. Um, but, um, but yeah, um, Dorothy, Dorothy, I, you know, I think she's, it's, I'm not quite sure what her, her final status is going to be, whether she's just going to be, continue to be Dorothy, uh, not Dorothy, Dolly, Dolly, his daughter, you know, to, to just be Dolly. Uh, 
I can't, I can't actually, I can't actually remember right now. I, I get she, she's not like married off by Trollope, let's say at the end there. So I, I guess that's she's. I, I, I get the sense that maybe honorable spinsterhood will be her way because I don't think she's going to find, um, at least not yet. Definitely not uh, with uh, Mister Gray's partner. She's not going to find somebody uh, worth um, the kind of the moral moral rectitude that she wants. And I don't think moral rectitude in the sense of like higher than thou, but somebody who's like really knows about right and wrong, right and wrong. Um, that's definitely not happening with, uh, Mr. Barry, I think his name is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And you know, and in the end, uh, Florence Mountjoy actually does come off as the most sensible woman in the book. She's surrounded by many suitors, uh, um, uh, you know, Mountjoy Scarborough. Uh, she's uh, by um, by a, a couple of Belgian fellows. She's she's definitely she's that. There's like a lot of a lot of men who are interested in her. But at the end, she picks she picks Harry Ansley, and it's like I think she basically kind of refers to him. It's like, well, you know, I picked you picked the pony for me, and I picked you. And it's sort of like, yeah, you're the pony. You're you're not a stallion. You're not some kind of great charger. You're not some wild beast. No, it's like you're a pony. You're, 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 you're sensible. You're fairly tame. Um, you're not a great, ma great colossus of a man. You're just something sensible for me to have. And, uh, that seems actually seems like, wow, that's a smart woman there. I, I, that you can, you can kind of, you can kind of respect that she's probably going to manage Harry Ansley in such a way that he will, um, uh, he will, he will get through in the end and he'll, he'll actually mature into, uh, uh, a fairly, fairly decent fellow, which is probably, you know, probably the best, the best in life. Uh, and, you know, I, I think about, um, Dostoevsky struggling with good and evil and kind of the clashes and the thing. It's like that. I can see why this is, that is, I mean, and I really enjoy brother brothers, Karamazov, but, um, I also really enjoy Trollope, uh, in how his characters, I can see. And sometimes I think I can see a lot more of myself in his characters than I can see in, uh, other more heightened literature, whether it's Dickens of a contemporary or, or well, actually Dostoevsky might be actually more kind of contemporary as well. Of I, I can see, I can see myself of like oh, I'm muddling through. I'm not a stallion. I'm probably a pony. You know, hopefully, I think I think I got lucky. I got a sensible woman said, oh, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> yes. So that is Mr. Scarborough's family. Um, we are going on to. Uh, we're going on to another another lonely troll next next month. I'll put I'll I'll put I'll put that down below what it is. Uh, I think Steve mentioned it in one of his videos. I think he rejected Orly's farm and went with a different one. I can't remember right now. Yeah, I'll put that down below if you're if you're curious. And I'll also have a, a playlist to uh, Steve's lonely troll up. So if this is far in the future, you just click on the playlist and you'll you'll see what the next thing is. All right, more videos later.